moments after we aired that exclusive report connecting the KKK to the Atlanta child murders, we got a call from a man claiming he was one of the informants in that investigation. And after vetting his identity, we sat down with him to hear for the first time why this insider believes the investigation is far from over. What compelled you after all these years to come forward? Um, is it something that's been weighing heavy on your heart? I'm getting ready to die. It's that simple. This is a man we'll refer to as Larry. We're keeping his identity undercover because he fears retribution for what he's about to reveal. He says he lived a double life as a Klan member during the top secret KKK investigation called the 8100 file. Nearly 40 years ago, the investigation looked into controversial claims that suggested the Klan could be responsible for the Atlanta Chow murders. This is the most heinous crimes committed in the nation killing those kids what harm did they do anybody none the missing murdered children had always stuck with you did anyone ever ask you why do you care about these black children a lot of agents have asked me why do you care they're I hate that word with a passion. I'm repeating what was told to me. I meant no personal animosity whatsoever towards it. Is that a word you used or was that ever part of your vocabulary? Never was. You can't address someone civil and with respect don't address them at all. Documents state that investigators had at least two strategically placed sources. Larry says he became one after a Klan member approached him. And he uh, asked me if I wanted to join the Klan. And so he did, as an undercover agent. Then I was asked to be the bodyguard of the Grand Dragon. As Larry shared his story, he outlined in details information about the individuals profiled in the KKK investigation. After four or five meetings, uh, the missing and murdered children come up. And says, we got to get them. We got to start a war. That's exactly what the 8100 file details. Within the documents, law enforcement officials explain that the investigation was kept secret and sealed away from the public due to fears it would cause a race riot. 11 Alive first reported on the 8100 file back in 1986 and we uncovered it recently. The clans wasn't after uh, girls, they were after males. Cause males could cause a lot of problems when they got big, when they growed up. Larry says he wore an audio recorder which could record up to 10 hours. Documents show the audio recordings were approved by authorities. You gotta find a lot of records was intentionally destroyed by these agencies. They didn't want the public to know. He's right. We confirm that all audio recordings, including those wiretaps, were destroyed. When Wayne Williams was convicted of two, I said, oh, we quit. This is it. We can close it out. The GBI helped lead the original KKK investigation. A spokesperson says they destroyed the evidence once agents dismissed a link to the Klan. Documents also state that APD was also involved in the 8100 file. They told us, quote, our investigators have not encountered any files outlining KKK involvement. Larry also recalls details about the boy mentioned in the files. Luby Jeter, who one day bumped his go-kart into a Klan member's car. They referred to him as a kid had run into a car, a truck or something with a, a four-wheeler or a go-kart or something. And on February 5th, 1981, Luby Jeter was found dead. I hope they find justice. They're still human, they still bleed, and uh, they hurt. And as far as reopening the case, he thinks nothing new will surface. I do not believe they're going to get anywhere. I guess only time will tell, right? Time will tell. I could hear it in your voice and in your emotions that this is a story that has stayed with you. I can't do nothing for them. Uh, let's drop it.
Wayne Williams is locked up, but not staying silent. Next, what the longtime suspect is saying about the new developments in the case.